All right, good morning. Welcome to your um, EV3 compiler demo lesson. Um, for this first project, we're gonna write a simple program called Hello World that enables you to um, just write a simple program, learn how to use um, pseudocode as a troubleshooting measure, and kind of gives you familiarity with the um, compiler here. So hang on here as I adjust things. I'm going to minimize this. You can find the compiler. It looks like this. My screen may look a little different than yours. Um, so it's like a mind storms. Looks like a little eyeball. Okay. It's a, it takes a bit to open up. So I'm just going to, I already have it pre-opened. Yours will not say teacher's information. Okay. So you've got a little um, navigation bar here, menu bar across the top and some tabs here. Go through the interface, we'll talk about writing pseudocode, and then we'll turn you loose on the program. Okay, so you're going to start by going to File, New Project, and Program, and Open. And while it does that, I'll just explain. So with the EV3 compiler, basically what a compiler is, is it takes one language, a language that you can write code in, and it compiles it or shrinks it down to a um, language called firmware or a simpler language that the robot can understand. Um, so the parts here, you have a project. So you can think of these as this is your, um, this is an app. These are the individual programs or um, little games within that app. Um, again, you have your menu bar. Down here, you have the blocks. Green designate action. So this is something that is doing. You could think of these as verbs or adjectives, not adjectives, but um, verbs or adverbs, where the robot's turning a motor, um, displaying something on the screen, making a sound, or lighting up its little, the little lights on the outside, um, on the face of the robot. Okay, then you have your flow control. These control the flow. They're kind of like the punctuation of a program. You can make something wait. You can repeat or loop something. You can make a switch, do this or that. Um, and then you have a loop interrupt. We're not going to get into that. We're going to stick mainly with these three. Yellow are, these are a little mis, these are misnomers. These are sensor blocks, but they're mainly for either resetting or getting a reading from the sensor, like pull up, what is the sensor showing? What is its state? They don't make the sensor do anything or they don't make the robot react to the sensor. So when we get into sensing, most notably like rotation or um, for a drag race challenge, you're gonna want to use the flow control blocks. And I'll show you how to do that here a little bit later on. So these are sensor type blocks, they just cause a reading or allow you to reset the sensor back. Um, the data operations, these are things, these are interesting <coughs> blocks we hopefully will get into. Um, they have, you have variables, constants, just like in mathematics, you could think of that as X, Y, B as your letter blocks. You can set those to specific things. You can set a constant. Um, and then you have um, some logical operations, mathematical, um, some other things, randomizing, um, these might come in handy as we get more into the complex programs. This is your data um, or brick center. You can see, um, is there a brick connected? Is there, what ports do you have connected to and what are connected to each ports? Um, if you have more than one brick connected, this is your download and download and play. Um, and this will tell you what type of brick is connected. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug my mouse and very quickly plug in, unless my EV3 is battery is dead. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my EV3 here, so you can see what um, what that looks like. Okay, um, as we're waiting for that to start up, a couple other things. So this is your content editor. This is where you can do your pseudocode. I'm going to start having you do pseudocode in here um, rather than in Google Docs. Um, it just makes it so you turn in the program, you're only turning in one file, program and pseudocode all in one nice, neat little package. So you're not having to um, 
kind of flip back and forth between the two. Um, you can hide this using this button and then come back and go there. So you have, you can do text, you can create, put in an image, you can do video, you can add some sound, and if you want to do a webcam um, thing, if you're on one of the laptops that I have, then that has um, web has a webcam you can record that or if you're at home this program is a f is free available for download open source if you go to Lego education and look for the EV3 compiler then you can download it for free from Lego education um, I'll put a link in the about tab on Google classroom all right so here you can see the, here's where you can name your brick you can just click in there and name it um, you can see what firmware is there. If it's not the most current, you'll usually get a little message when you plug in your robot to the compiler. Um, you can do some wireless setup, which we don't use. This will allow you to open up the memory on the brick, and this is where you can go to delete programs. Okay, I'll close that out. Here's the port view, so you can see what things are plugged into the letter ports and what Things are plugged into the number ports. Um, very quickly, something to note down. I'd put this in your notes. Hand, hand, twink, wink, nudge, nudge. Motors go in letters. Sensors go in numbers. And it doesn't matter what motor goes in what um, letter. And it doesn't matter what sensor goes in what number. Some of these have, have defaults that they um, go to. But it's not... Um, it does the, the default. It doesn't have to be that. If it's easier for you to set up your um, touch sensor or your color sensor to a to port four or port three, something other than its default, then you would have an issue. You wouldn't have you wouldn't have an issue. Excuse me. All right. So um, up here you have your tools and file. These are uh, this is where you can go to save. Um, coincidentally, if you hit file and project save as. That's how you can change the name of the project up here. And I would kind of get in the habit of not leaving it as project. It makes it easier to find it on the robot. And so I'm gonna call this first program JG. Okay, each of you, each partner is going to be writing their version of this program so that you have a you have experience, you get experience and I can see evidence that you can write code so and then i'm gonna go ahead and save and we're going to start here first program all right to rename the program one you just double click there and we'll say hello world and there you go now the nice thing is this little asterisk up here to denote something that has not been saved okay editing you can cut copy and paste um, language doesn't matter set up for English here's where you can do a firmware update we can get into that if that happens I'll do that um, if you need to um, my blocks maybe we'll get into that sound editor this is where you can record your own sound the image editor if you want to make your own kind of bitmap image you can do that as well um, and no, I'm not going to save that all right so pseudocode I'm going to start by selecting text pseudocode is a um, rough draft of your program. So the first program we're going to write, and I kind of try to follow the writing process. So I start with a pre-write. What I want to be able to see or hear the robot do. In previous lessons I've called this step-by-step, -step, or in previous classes I've called this step-by-step. -step. Um, I'm trying to get a little bit more efficient. So I want to be able to see the robot sleeping with closed eyes making snoring sound uh, and then, then wake up when button button is pushed giggling um, giggling and opening eyes then say hello world okay there's my pre-write I've organized my thoughts and this is what I want to be able to see here and um, yeah I think that's the right spelling I'm not gonna worry about spelling so pseudocode is a rough draft of what your programs are gonna look like and with a rough draft it's something that's meant to be edited it's something that's meant to be um, incorrect or not 
um, it can be written on. Um, one of the things I like to do with my pseudocode is I do like to print it out. Um, unfortunately, I don't think that um, you have a print option. I'll have to try this out in class where I can have a connected printer. Um, but I don't think you can print out this. You can always copy and paste. I sometimes like to take my pseudocode with me when I'm testing things out so I have I can kind of walk through this walk through the steps. Um, so we're gonna go start with line one. Each line of pseudocode is should be a numbered or bulleted list and you can get I think it, you have to create your own lists here. There's this simple editor it doesn't allow you to do that. Um, but so I start off with the block. So I'm gonna start with a display block. Um, and I'm choosing display block because, not to say black display block, because um, I know that's what I want it. I want it to show something. So I want it to start out with closed eyes. Um, and I know that, so I got display block and then sound block. Not sounds block, sound block. Um, snoring sound. Now I don't know if it has a snoring sound yet or not. Um, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna take a look, I'm gonna get in there and when I, I'll show you how to kind of test that out. You're gonna be tempted to write the program and then go back and write the pseudocode first. This is our first troubleshooting thing though. You want the pseudocode written first and I'm not looking for a perfect pseudocode that matches the program or the program, the pseudocode matches what's going on in the program. I'm looking for that you've used it to make changes and I'm going to actually ask you to document the changes that you've made and I'm going to show you how you can do that here in the content editor. Um, or if you want, you're welcome to do this in Google Docs and submit it as a separate document. Okay, so display sound here, let's continue on. And so it's making it snoring sound um, and then I'm going to um, push. Now, I'm going to have it do this and I want it to wait to kind of continue doing this or wait to wake up until I push the button. So I'm gonna try a wait for block and, or I'm just gonna say wait block. I'm gonna say wait for button push. And, and then I'm gonna go in and then I'm gonna say display, open eyes. Giggle. And then, whoops, my numbering got all messed up here. Five, six is period. Um, sound block, giggle, and then um, open eyes, giggle, and then So there I've got my simple pseudocode. Alrighty, so now writing some code. So I'm gonna leave this open, I'm gonna move this over. Um, to write the code, you'll just simply come back into the kind of area here, and now you're gonna start grabbing the blocks. I don't mind if you go ahead and you know start going ahead and grabbing some blocks and seeing what they do to get an idea of what um, what it is you want to be, you know, what they're looking for, what you're looking for. Um, but again, don't get in the habit of writing your program and then going back and writing your pseudocode. I expect that the pseudocode is going to have changes and, and stuff like that. So I start off with a display block. So I'm going to bring the display block up here and I'm going to drop it in. And so some of the things to know, and I'm going to bring up the sound block too. Um, just to let you kind of so I can show them both at the same time. So X, Y, these are coordinate planes. This is, you can think of the display face on your robot as an X, Y um, plane um, with X, kind of this would be the center of it, X being along, you know the axis. Okay, um, and then this is your um, clear, clear screen so you can make it clear the screen. You have some choices to make. You can make it say to some text, you can make it display some shapes, you can reset the screen or you can go and say, hey, I want to show an image, but you'll notice there's nothing coming up. This little white space up here is your image. I'm going to unplug my robot and get into bring my mouse in here. 
so it makes it a little bit easier to navigate. Okay, so I'm gonna click up here and I'm gonna say project images and Lego image files. Project images are ones that are in the project. Lego image files are ones that are in, that you have access to. Okay, so um, I notice there's a various a number of various and sundry folders in here. I have one called eyes. And I'm gonna say, oh, I have a number of eyes that I can um, choose from. So let's see here. I'm going to, I'm looking for one. Oh, sleeping, perfect. And it'll show me an example of what that looks like. Okay, and then I'm gonna move on. And sound, sound works the same way. You can make it stop playing a sound. You can play a file, similar to the file over here. You can make it play a tone, and um, you can adjust that tone. I thought it would play a demo here. I guess it doesn't. Um, or you can say, I want to play a note, and this is somewhat based on the piano keys. Okay. Um, or we're going to stick to playing a file. And I'm going to say, OK, file name. And again, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to look for sounds. Now, you're going to see that there's a various, a lot of different sounds. You may have to search for the ones that you're looking for. Um, let's take a look at expressions. Maybe that's got my snoring sound in here. Um, going through. Oh, snoring. There we go. So it gives you a little demonstration there. Alrighty. Now, um, the next part of this is I'll see here, I got a weight block. So I wanted to control the flow. Um, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to go into a weight and wait here. Now, I've got wait for time. However, I'm saying I want it to push a button. So you can come here, this is time, so I can change the time here, I can just click and change. Uh, I can adjust volume level here. But if I click in this little box here, it shows me all the things I can make the robot change for. Now, you may, thought, you may think touch sensor, that's what I want. Touch sensor is actually a sensor you can add on to the robot. We're going to get into that a little bit later on. Um, if you'd like to set up the robot to do that, uh, maybe some extra credit points in there for you. But we're looking at the brick buttons. And we're going to come over here to compare, um, or we can do change. Um, I'm just going to go in and change and then see, oh, okay, so change isn't going to do what I want it to do. So I want to come into brick buttons and I want to compare brick buttons. Okay, that gives me, so here I have set what button I want. So I can say, I can designate which button is going to be pushed. And default is the center button. Um, I'm going to let you choose which button you want. Um, I'm going to stick with number two. And then you can set the state. So I want it to either, you have three, released, meaning it's, it's sitting up, pressed meaning it's pushed down, bumped meaning it's pushed and released very quickly. You choose the setting. And that will allow you to um, kind of make it so that it waits for this to um, continue before it continues on with the program. Okay, here, this one right here, you have, you can play it only once. Um, so you can set up to play once. Now you can make it play multiple times or you can make it play repeatedly. Um, I'm going to let you kind of figure it out because um, you want it to kind of be snoring until it pushes that button, hint, hint, wink, wink. Okay. Um, also with sound, what I do want to show you is a um, you have the ability under the tools to go to the sound editor. This allows you to record your own sounds and kind of attach them, put them in here. I have some microphones available. I'd like to test this out um, with a couple people in class to see if we can get it working. And if not, I'm gonna start troubleshooting it because I think this would be kind of cool and kind of fun to do. But basically you just hit record, record the sound you want, save it, you can um, edit it. So if I just go record. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. And so there's my sound, I've got I can clip it, or kind of clip it there, and then click save, and I'll just say, click OK, and it'll it'll save it in there. So I'm saving, closing, so to get to it, so then I should be able to go to, there's the sound that I recorded under project sound. So it attaches it to the project. Um, make sure that your clicking and saving often. 
Um, other tools that you have, oh, I already kind of went through there. Now, let's say you want to know what a brick does. So let's say for this one, you're not quite sure. So I have it highlighted in blue. I can go to help and I can say show context help. That'll give me information on the wait for block and, or the wait for and the brick buttons. It'll kind of give me an overview of what it is. I have a link to more information. Um, now let's say I want to know more about the sound block and um, I'm going to be on files here. So I'm going to go to context help. Whoa, it's telling me sound, play files. So it gives me some information on that specific thing as long as I have it. So let's see here, let's go to volume. There it changes to the volume. This is a helpful tool in kind of understanding what these parts do and getting some more information. Another thing that's really helpful, help, EV3 help. This will take you out on the web and then you can go and get some specific files. You can get more information on programming blocks in particular, data logging, we're not going to technically get into that. Tools, you can get help with the tools. I, appreciate, I apologize for the size. Um, so that's another helpful troubleshooting tool. All right, so there are going to be some problems with this pseudocode that I'm going to want you to notice. Um, so let's say it, I get into the next one and I notice that snoring, let's say, I'm just going to simulate this snoring sound. I'm just going to put in Z's. Or, actually, I don't know what I'll do. So I said closed eyes, but really I found sleeping eyes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here. I'm going to change the color to red, and I'm going to say... So there I've documented the, a change that I made. Um, so that way I know that I should have it as I made the change to sleeping eyes. Okay. Um, I could say wait for a button push and say, oh, well, you know what? I want this to be, I made a change and I said um, center button and so I said center button. So there's there I'm denoting the changes that I made. Um, and it's good to do that. It helps me see what what you're doing, kind of gives me an uh, idea of what your thinking is. Also, it prevents you from trying the same thing again and again. Let's say closed eyes. Let's say they didn't have sleeping eyes or you made a guess and um, all that. So it gives you a chance to um, document what changes you are. I'm going to have you finish out this program to the specs that are listed on the assignment in there. Um, this has just a, been a quick tutorial for the um, EV3 compiler. We're gonna get a little bit more into detail here about this um, in future, future lessons when we make the robot go. I'm gonna end it by saving. If you have any questions, email jgarrett at fiveschools.com. Yeah.